Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture seven of data mining. So today uh, we will discuss frequent pattern mining and we will be discussing uh, one of the earliest algorithms for scalable or efficient frequent set, uh, frequent item set mining from transactional databases. We will discuss, in particular, we will discuss the a priori algorithm. So we had introduced the frequent pattern mining problem last time. So we will start from there again today and then uh, move on to the a priori algorithm for finding frequent item sets in transactional databases. So we do have a quiz today around 3.05 or 3 p.m. So the quiz would, of course, cover the previous lectures uh, from the preceding quiz, from the last quiz. So are there any questions before I get started? So if there are no questions, so we, we can get started. So we had started talking about frequent pattern mining last time. So we will now uh, formally introduce the problem of frequent item set mining, which is one specific type of pattern. So frequent item set mining. So I had uh, done this last time as well, but I'm going to repeat it again today. So the problem setting is as follows. Uh, we have a set I, which is the set of all possible items. So small I1, small I2, these are items till small I M. So capital I is the set of possible items. So if you think of uh, the problem of market basket analysis, these are different items for sale in a retail store. So total number of items is M. So this I is sometimes also called a vocabulary, vocabulary or even dictionary. Uh, this name of course comes from uh, NLP where you have a set of distinct types or items. Uh, but the idea is that these are the possible items that uh, appear in your frequent item set mining problem. And then you have your transactional database, T. Transactional database is also a set. This is also a set. I is a set, capital T is also a set of transactions, T1, T2, to Tn. So they are N transactions. So there is no, actually theoretically, there is no notion of order among the transactions, at least for this problem. So N is the total number of transactions, M is the total number of items or dictionary size. Each transaction, each TI, so when I write underscore, it's a subscript. Sometimes I don't write underscore, but you should understand from the context whether it's a subscript or not. So this is in general a subset or equal to I. So each transaction can contain items from the set of possible items, capital I. So you can think of each transaction in a market basket analysis setting as a basket that is checked out and it will contain products from the store that are available in the store, right? It could contain one product from the store or it could contain all products from the store. Of course, that would be very rare, uh, but in general, it's a subset that can also be equal to the whole set of distinct items i. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, this is basically the setting. So any item set, so we say item set, x is also in general a subset or equal to i. 
So any item set, it could be a transaction. I, transaction is also an item set. But any item set of interest X is also a subset of I. So the support of this item set X, we call it support of this item set X, is basically uh, the fraction of times this item set appears in the transactional database. Okay. So if I want to write this very formally, it would be something like this. So transaction TI such that TI, sorry, X is a subset or equal to TI. divided by n. So what is the numerator here? What in the numerator, I talk about a set Ti. So this is a set of transactions. So the set of transactions such that the condition is this item set X is a subset of that. So in other words, we are counting the transaction that contain this item set. So if I want to write this in words, so this would be number of transactions in T that contain X, of course, divided by N. N is what the total number of transactions. So sometimes we will express this as a percentage also. If you multiply this with 100, you get a percentage. Okay? So now this is an item set of interest. We have found a support in the database. So now what is the problem of frequent item set mining? So the problem of frequent item set mining problem. So, so we are given I T. What is I? A set of possible items. T is a database of size N. Find all item sets X in T such that support of X is greater than equal to some minimum support that is user specified. Okay. So min sub, so min sub, sometimes you can also say it's a parameter theta. So user specified threshold. Hmm. Okay. So just to take some numbers, let's say we are talking about market basket analysis. And let's say theta is 2%, which is also 0 0.02, right? So what does this mean? So we, we are interested in all item sets in our transactional database that occur more than 2% in the transactional database. So, so for example, I mean, it, just to give an example from a retail store. So milk, for example, may occur. So let me say, so support of milk, let's say is uh, 0 0.02, let's say, 10%. So let's say support of milk and let's say bread, let's say is uh, 5%. So both of these values are greater than 2%. So we will say that these two item sets, in the first case, there is just one item in the item set, but we still call it item set. In the second case, there is milk and bread. So in the first case, the item set is simply milk, in the second case, we have milk and bread. So both of these item sets would then be frequent because according to our definition and our analysis, both of these item sets have a uh, support that is greater than minimum support, in this case, 2%. Okay. So the goal in frequent item set mining to find all such 
item sets x not just milk and milk bread all such item sets okay so that's the goal So the parameter minimum minimum support or theta is user specified, and we will discuss later on uh, the implications of this parameter on the analysis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay, so uh, so this is the general setting of the frequent item set mining problem. So let me uh, so in the in the naive approach, what would you do typically? So you have a transactional database. You would like to find all frequent item sets. So what would you do? You would probably generate all subsets of i okay associate a counter with each subset which you can call an item set okay okay scan the transactional database t and update the counters if any counter is greater than min support then output it as a okay so what is the issue here? The major issue here is that the possible subsets of I is massive. Uh, even if you take, let's say 10 items, let's say M is equal to 10, the possible subsets of 10 items is the power set of this set, which is of course two raised to the power of 10, which is over 1000. But let's say if you have M is equal to 100, this become two raised to the power of 100, which is a massive number. But 100 itself is not a large number. In a retail store, M would be easily in the thousands. So you can't enumerate all item sets and then maintain a counter for all of those item sets, then scan the database, which itself might be very large, to count all those item sets in a transactional database and then output the ones that are frequent. Okay? So that's why we need scalable algorithms. And algorithms are required. Okay? So, so the first algorithm that made this problem very popular among the industry as well as academicians is called the a priori algorithm, a very funny name, a priori algorithm. So this was proposed by Agarwal in uh, in 1994, 1993, 1994. So let's look at this algorithm. What are the ideas that this algorithm uses? And uh, then we'll look at an example. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, it uses the a priori principle, which is also sometimes called a downward closure lemma or principle. So that's where the name comes from. What is this principle? So again, given the setting that I've previously defined, 
and now basically i'll use a simpler setting let's say i are your alphabets a b c and so on okay just for illustration purposes so so for example then a b is an item set so by the way if you have an item set that has two items in it this is sometimes also called a two item set okay so in this case for example a this would be a one item set so this one or two tells us how many items are there in the set so in general we have a k item set which has k items in the set ठीक है सो समटाइम्स ए बी जो मैंने कट्ठा लिखा हुआ है मैं ब्रेसिस में डाला हुआ टू इंश्योर दैट दिस इज अ सेट समटाइम्स मैं ब्रेसिस नहीं डालूंगा यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज अ सेट टू आइटम्स बिकॉज़ वी हैव कंसीडर आइटम्स एज ए बी सी एज द लेटर्स इन द इंग्लिश अल्फाबेट सो दिस कुड बी वे डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर डोमेन दे कुड बी एनीथिंग ए कुड बी ब्रेड बी कुड बी मिल्क सी कुड बी बटर एंड सो ऑन ठीक है uh okay so what is the a priori principle so it's a, a very intuitive idea so let's say uh if you know that a item set a b c is not frequent what does this mean that it's not frequent meaning that support of a b c is less than theta or minimum support right in the transactional database so if you know this if someone tells you that abc is not frequent is there something that you can say about the supersets or and the subsets of abc so let's say we talk about a superset so abc and f let's say this is a superset would this be frequent so this for would be not frequent for sure because if abc is not frequent obviously its superset is never going to be frequent theek okay? hai so why again let's say if you take a simple example let's say abc ka database le lete hain so let's say hamari pehli transaction hai ab hai dusri a hai teesri ac hai uh teesri let's say A B C है ठीक है सो हाउ मेनी ट्रांजेक्शन डू वी हैव ठीक है वी हैव फोर ट्रांजेक्शन सो लेट्स से मिनिमम सपोर्ट इज थ्री बाय द वे मिनिमम सपोर्ट जब कई दफा हम कहते हैं एब्सोल्यूट सपोर्ट एब्सोल्यूट सपोर्ट इज जस्ट द काउंट और जब हम एब्सोल्यूट नहीं लगाते तो यूजली विल से इट्स ए फ्रैक्शन इट्स ए परसेंटेज इट्स ए रेशियो तो दिस फॉर दिस स्मॉल एग्जांपल लेट्स से वी हैव एब्सोल्यूट मेन सपोर्ट इज लेट्स से 3 ठीक है सो व्हिच मींस दैट ए बी इज नॉट फ्रीक्वेंट ठीक है ना तो ए बी कितनी दफा आ रहा है so ab occurs twice so it's not frequent right pehli transaction mein aa raha hai chauthi mein aa raha hai it's not frequent because frequency frequent requires that it should occur at least three times so ab is not frequent so then right away we can say that abc is also not frequent because jab ab hi nahi aa raha ab ke sath koi aur cheez laga de to wo bhi nahi itna aayega right so this is the simple principle that is used uh, or exploited in this algorithm so this principle is called a priori principle its inverse is also reverse is also uh, sometimes useful although ye jo forward direction this is what is actually used in the algorithm the reverse mein kya hoga let's say ab uh, is frequent then all is subset will also be frequent so a would be frequent b would be frequent and so on okay 
all its substance subsets would also be frequent. So the a priori principle hai, if an item set is not frequent, then a superset is not going to be frequent. And this form is also, also expressed as the downward closure property. So wo abhi thoda se mein downward closure kyun kehta hai? because item set lattice may you can close the lattice. So I'll come to that shortly. Hai? And the reverse is also uh, valid, meaning that if an item set is frequent, then its subset are also frequent. Okay. So this is the main principle on which this algorithm is based. In addition to that, it uses some other ideas which I'll mention here and then we go straight to an uh, example. So first one is candidate. So this a priori algorithm is a candidate generation and test approach. It first generates some candidate item sets and then tests them. Okay. So that's one idea in addition to a priori principle. The other idea is that it is level by level item set growth. Meaning that, and this is also mean that it's breadth first from an algorithm perspective, breadth first. Meaning that Bob, you start with so breadth as well as both bottom up. These are algorithms ke concepts. Hai. So bottom up ka matlab ye ke, you start with single item sets, one item sets, and breadth first ka set is sare one item sets up don't link. Breadth pe ja rahe. And then you go to the two item sets. A, B, A, C, A, D, and so on. And uske bhi sare aap phir bana lenge. And then go, go for So breadth first, bottom up. Theek hai? And level by level, level by level, pehle one pe karenge, two pe karenge, three pe karenge. And finally, it uses good book, bookkeeping to avoid duplicate generation. Theek hai? So these are some of the ideas in this algorithm. Yeah. All right. So let me go to a simple example that is given in the slides also. Let's say we are given this transactional database. So there are just four transactions. Okay. And the items in each transaction are listed here. So AC. So these are the items in the transactions. So the algorithm works in this way. So you have the original transactional database. You scan the database once and count the number of times that we have count the number of one item sets, meaning the single items. So you scan the database from top to down and count the number of times that you have seen each item. So ACD A occurs in this a occurs here also too. So there are two A's, right? So this is the one item set. 
बी सी डी टी एंड वी हैव द काउंट हियर सो सपोर्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ एब्सोलूट काउंट सो वी हैव नाउ स्कैन द डेटा बेस वंस एंड वी हैव द काउंट फॉर सिंगल आइटम्स और वन आइटम सेट्स ठीक है एंड वी हैव रिटर्न दैम हेयर so this by the way this table is the candidate one item set meaning that we have generated all one item sets and now we want to determine whether they are frequent or not once they are frequent which means that they are, we have tested them then they become frequent one item sets so minimum support for this problem absolute minimum support is 2 theek hai so so you notice that d has been re removed from this table theek hai d kyun nikal liya because iski support 1 thi so minimum support was 2 so this can not be frequent so now this particular table on which my cursor is this is the table of frequent one item sets so we first generated the candidate one item sets we then tested it we generated and counted and then tested it and after removing those that are not frequent we are left with the frequent one item sets theek okay? hai theek okay? hai so now we have done the first level फर्स्ट लेवल हमारा कंप्लीट हो गया नाउ वी मूव टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल विच इन विच वी जनरेट द कैंडिडेट टू आइटम सेट जिसमें दो आइटम्स होंगे ठीक है नाउ हेयर द बुक कीपिंग कम्स इन वील डू दिस जनरेशन इन ए स्पेसिफिक वे लेक्सिकोग्राफिक ऑर्डर कोई हम ऑर्डर फिट कर लेंगे आइटम्स का और उस ऑर्डर में हम कैंडिडेट्स को जनरेट करेंगे सो नाउ ए बी सी एंड ई तो नाउ वी जनरेट ए बी ए सी ए देन बी सी एंड बी ई एंड देन सी ई तो ये जनरेटेड टू आइटम सेट्स हो गए ठीक है सो वंस यू हैव जनरेटेड दिस कैंडिडेट टू आइटम सेट्स सो दीज आर कैंडिडेट टू आइटम सेट्स यू स्कैन द डेटाबेस अगेन टू काउंट दैम और ये काउंट इसके आगे लिखे हुए हैं ठीक है, सो यू नोटिस दैट वी हैव अकाउंट फॉर ए बी एस वन वन तो ऑब्वियसली दिस कैन नॉट बी फ्रीक्वेंट तो बाय आवर ओन स्पेसिफिकेशन वन इज लेस देन टू दिस इज फाइन दिस इज आल्सो लेस ए इज आल्सो नॉट फ्रीक्वेंट सो द वंस दैट आर लेस देन टू वुड बी रिमूव so now this table is the frequent two item sets we have removed all those two item sets that are not frequent theek hai ye two hai ac bc is also two and this is three this is also two so what are we left we have we have four two item sets ek ce hai ek ee ce bc and ac theek okay? hai so you notice that as we move deeper meaning that we get longer item sets we have removed the infrequent item sets and we have generated now the frequent two item sets the set of all frequent item sets now is the frequent one item sets in the previous table and this frequent two item sets ab idhar se fir wohi process hum karenge from these two item sets we generate the frequent we generate the candidate three item sets ab isme generation mein bhi ek hum book keeping ya ek ek specific tarike se karenge so that we don't do it multiple times we do, do multiple duplicates
So the idea is to do this is after about two item sets, and we look at those two item sets whose first, uh, except for the last, the first, I the first up till the last item set match. Then we we put the first item set and add the last item from the second item set. So this will give us a candidate and the higher order candidate item set. So in this case, so let's see. Uh, तो आप AC है और BC है, ठीक है? So AC और BC A इसमें मैच नहीं कर रहा, तो इसका मतलब ये हम कुछ नहीं कर सकते सकते। BC और BE में B मैच कर रहा, तो we can generate BCE from here, ठीक है? And then there is no other that we can do. So we get only one candidate three item set B C E. So this we will count. When we have a higher order candidate item set, we actually do two tests. The first test is we check whether its two smaller subset is it frequent or not. By the way, B C E subsets are being made. One B C E, so B C E is frequent, of course. दूसरा सबसेट है बी इस बी ई फ्रीक्वेंट पिछले हमारे आइटम सेट में है ए सी बी सी बी ई भी है ठीक है एंड देन सी ई ठीक है सी ई भी है तो इसका जो तीनों सबसेट एक्चुअली आर फ्रीक्वेंट सो वी कैन नॉट रिमूव इट बट इफ फॉर एनी एग्जांपल इफ एनी ऑफ दोस Subset is infrequent. We remove it even before counting. But now, since we have not removed it, we go ahead and count it. So count is cut two aagya, which means that it is frequent. So its ka matlab hai ke now since we have just one three item sets ke further generation nahi ho, so that's where we stop. ठीक है? So that's where we stop. So to reiterate, you have candidates, generation, and then testing. So given a transactional database, you scan the database first once to get the one item sets. You count those one item sets and then get the frequent one item sets. From those frequent one item sets, you generate the candidate two item sets, meaning the two items in each set. And we do this in a specific way so that we don't do redundant work or duplicate work. So once we have the two items set, we count them again in the database. And then if there is any that is less than the minimum support count, we delete it. From this frequent now, two item set, we generate the candidate three item sets. So from the candidate three item sets, we check whether its subsets are in the frequent two item sets. If they are not, then it will be removed. If they are there, so it cannot be removed now, but we now scan the database and count the number of occurrences. If the count is less than the minimum support, it will be deleted. Otherwise, it will be retained. And since in this particular example, we are left with just one item set, you cannot generate any further higher order item sets. And that's where you stop. And we have now found all frequent item sets from one item sets to two item sets to three item sets, and we do not have any higher order item sets in this problem that are frequent. Okay, so uh, any questions here? So we'll discuss a few further ideas here before we move on, but before I um, Remove this slide. So, are there any questions on this slide? All right.
so I talked about the item cell lattice. So the item cell lattice is basically a graphical way of representing how the a priori algorithm works and how the item sets are generated. Okay. So, so at the one level, at the top level, you can say you have single items, A. A, B, C. Okay. So this is the first level. So at the second level from A, B, you will get A, B. This is second level from A and C, you get AC. So that's all you have from this ABC. And then AB and AC, you get the final level, which is ABC. Okay. Uh, let me go to the next one. So we have, this is one item search level, two item search level, three item search level, four item search level. So one item search level comes to be one side one item set, two item sets and two item sets. And the downward closure essentially basically means that you can close this item set at some point. Meaning that let's say you have A, B, you have A, B, A, B, A, B, infrequent A, B, A, A, B, so let's say, uh, let me just mention it here. Let's say A, B, let's say is infrequent. So it means that you can close it here, meaning that iske niche jane ke nahi hai because iske sare niche bade item sets honge, they will never be frequent. So downward closure ka matlab ye hai, this is the graphical view of it. Of course, is the a priori principle. If an item set is not frequent, its superset will never be frequent. So lattice mein wo, let's say A, B, C, हमको पता चला है फ्रीक्वेंट नहीं है हम उसके नीचे लाइन लगा देंगे सो so दैट उसके नीचे जाने की जरूरत नहीं है ए बी सी डी वुड नेवर बी फ्रीक्वेंट ठीक है सो फॉर एग्जांपल ए बी सी फोर आइटम सेट है ए बी सी थ्री आइटम सेट है इफ दिस इज नॉट फ्रीक्वेंट वी जस्ट ड्रॉ अ लाइन सो दैट ए बी सी एंड डी So the lattice essentially is a graphical way of representing the level by level growth of uh, or generation of items. So let me write it here as well. So let's say first level may A, B, C, and D. Okay. This is the first level. Next level be A B hai aapke baas. A C hai. And then A D hai. Then B C hai. Then B D hai. And then C D hai. Right? Uske baad of course aapke baas A B C hai. A B D hai. Thik hai. Uh, B C D hai. Right? And then from here, of course, A, B, C, D. Okay. So, so you can generate, for example, so to generate A, B, so hum lines should show karte hai. A or B ki lines A, B ki taraf aari, because A, B generate hoga from A and B. So A, B, C, for example, this can be generated from A, B, and A, C. It can also be generated from A, B, and B, C. But we have one path used to generate it so that we don't do duplicate generation. So that basically is that whenever we have some item sets, let's say A, B, C, D, and let's say A, B, C, F, ये दो आइटम सेट्स हैं इसको हमने लेट्स से यूज करना टू जनरेट वील मैच द फर्स्ट फ्यू आइटम्स एक्सेप्ट द लास्ट इन दिस केस दे आर मैचिंग वी राइट द फर्स्ट 
all items and add the second last item from the second. So this would be the generated item from these two items. And of course, within each item set, we write those items in a fixed order. So we call that some order. We can call it a lexicographic order. Okay. So हम A B C use कर रहे हैं हमको यहाँ पता चल रहा है order क्या है. But let's say आपके different items हैं उनको आपको codes दे सकते हैं, numbers दे सकते हैं so that the orders are well defined. और जब एक दफा आपने order fix कर दिया उसी order में आप उसको लिखेंगे उसी order में आप उसको process करेंगे. तो यही जो मैंने एग्जाम्पल अभी लिखी थी ए बी सी एंड डी लेट से एंड ए बी सी क्या था एंड एफ लेट से लेट से दीज आर माय फ्रीक्वेंट कोर आइटम सेट्स ठीक है लेट से दीज आर ऑल माई फ्रीक्वेंट फोर आइटम सेट्स जस्ट टेकिंग ए हाइपोथेटिकल एग्जाम्पल सो फ्रॉम दिस ए बी सी एक सेकेंड क्या कर रहे हैं हाँ ठीक है डी एंड एफ सो दिस इज माई कैंडिडेट फाइव आइटम सेट ओनली वन इज जनरेटेड ठीक है Why is it candidate? We still need to check whether it is frequent or not. So there are two checks that we can apply. Two checks. The first check is we find all the four subsets of this generated candidate item set and check whether they appear in the frequent four item sets. Now, in this, I'm. This candidate five item set. In this. दो फोर सबसेट्स वही होंगे जिससे हमने ये जनरेट किया बट इसमें और भी होंगे फॉर एग्जांपल फॉर एग्जांपल सो फॉर एग्जांपल सो बी सी डी एफ इज आल्सो ए फोर सबसेट इज दिस फ्रीक्वेंट इज दिस फ्रीक्वेंट So, according to our small example, it is not frequent because it does not exist in my frequent four item sets. So, this means that this candidate generated by A, B, C, D, F, I will delete it here. I will delete it. I will prune it. What they call pruning. So, this is called pruning before even counting the items that are generated. Okay. So, this is called pruning before even counting the items that are generated. So, this is called pruning before even counting the items that are generated. So, this is called pruning before even counting the items that are generated. So, this is called pruning before even counting the items that are generated. So, this is called pruning before even counting the items that are generated. So, this is called pruning before even counting the items लेट से इसमें फोर सारे फोर सबसेट इसमें होते ऊपर फ्रीक्वेंट तो देन वील नाउ गो इन टू डेटा बेस एंड एक्चुअली डू द काउंटिंग एंड ऑफ कोर्स आफ्टर द काउंटिंग इफ इट सपोर्ट इज लेस देन मिनिमम सपोर्ट विल स्टिल प्रून इट अगेन बट लेट से जब सपोर्ट ज्यादा हो गए फिर प्रून नहीं करेंगे एंड इट विल कंटिन्यू इन दिस फैशन Any questions? So this idea we need to understand fairly clearly, uh, meaning that we have candidate generation. After generation, we check whether its subsets appear in the previous level. So. so by the way we also use a notation let's say c k is a set of k item set theek okay? hai and then l k kai dafa use karte hain kai dafa f k use karte hain this is the set of frequent k item sets ठीक है, so in the above example, 
जो ऊपर मैंने एग्जाम्पल दी थी उसमें सी फोर क्या था सी फोर बेसिकली ए नो सॉरी सी फोर नहीं था वो एफ फोर था बेसिकली था ए बी सी डी एंड ए बी सी एफ और जो सी फाइव था वो हमारे पास ए बी सी डी एंड एफ था ठीक है तो लेवल बाय लेवल वी स्टार्ट विद सी वन एंड देन गेट एफ वन ठीक है दैलगुदम ग्रज सी वन से फिर एफ वन होता है फिर उसके बाद सी टू के बाद एफ टू तो फिर सी थ्री के बाद एफ थ्री एंड सो ऑन अंटिल वी स्टॉप वी कैन नॉट जनरेट एनी फर्दर हायर ऑर्डर कैंडिडेट्स नाउ व्हाट हैज दिस एल्गोरिथम इंप्रूव्ड बियॉन्ड आवर नाइव ब्रूट फोर्स अप्रोच फॉर फाइंडिंग फ्रीक्वेंट आइटम सेट्स सो we have avoided generating all possible item sets in the uh, set of possible items in our problem we have started bottom up meaning of course wo lattice mein ulta hai lattice upar se niche aa raha hai but bottom up algorithmic way ke pehle hum one items ko karte hain fir two items ko karte hain fir three ko karte hain and we know from the a priori principle if we have found an item set that is not if frequent uska further higher order pe jaane ki zarurat hi nahi hai so in this way we are able to stop before we generate all the possible item sets theek okay? hai so significant reduction in the number of uh, item sets that we have generated and counted would be achieved depending of course on the theta or the minimum support that you have chosen for your particular problem any questions any questions so basically the process of generating higher order candidates is also sometimes at least in the literature for a priori is called self join so meaning that c to produce your c k theek hai so this is the self join process so usko self join typically hum kehte hain literature mein theek hai all right so now uh, a couple of questions uh, and of course discussion on this algorithm so let's say uh, just hypothetically let's say the maximum length of item sets that you have found to be frequent in a transactional database is k theek hai so they are up to let's say k ka koi number bhi le lete hain k is equal to let's say 10 so the longest item set that you have found to be frequent in a database is 10 so now how the question is how many how many scans of t which is our database are 
required or would be done. Okay. Remember, we have to scan the database once to get the candidate one item sets. Then you scan twice to candidate two, three, four. To get the candidate 10 item sets, uh, once you generate the, uh, if you want to generate the 10 item sets, you may uh, terminate the scan. So, so for example, let's say you have nine scans. Kar liye. So nine scans ka matlab ye hai ke you have found nine item sets that are nine items long, nine, nine item sets, right? Now, after that, you have candidate 10 generate. Kar diya. Ab, let's say candidate 10 generate to ho gaya, but perhaps those candidate 10 may have to scan karne ke nahi padi, they were deleted before the scan. Uh, okay, sorry, we said the longest one was 10. Sorry, theke. so candidate 10 generate, ke, you have to scan it. Theke? So scan, usko kiya apne, to you found out that it was not frequent. It's like it removed. Ho gaya. So in the worst case, if I mean, so in the case that you want to generate at least an item set of size 10, which is frequent, you have to do at least 10 or 10 plus 1 scans. 10 usko honge jab uh when you scan kiya to you have found that uh they were frequent and you generated the 11th candidate item set 11 scan apne nahi kiya because usme se wo jo item set tha wo remove ho gaya because of it doesn't have subsets in the 10 frequent item sets aur ek case hai ki aapne 11th ka scan bhi kar diya Scan करने के बाद देखा कि उसका count कम था before below so इसका मतलब आपका जो maximum length जो generate हुई है ten ही हुई so generate ten you can do ten or eleven scans or k or k plus one scans so of course equal to the number of the length of uh, the item set that we have found so each scan of the database is actually not a trivial scan मतलब usually transactional databases are huge and can be massive. So you can think of the uh, transactions that appear at Carrefour, let's say even at one store, let's say your package is mall ka Carrefour, hai, over let's say a week, so n could easily go into the tens of thousands or even millions. Uh, we say hundreds of thousands or even millions. Okay? So database ko scan karna is not easy. Secondly, it's not scan nahi karna apne. Har transaction ko dekhna hai, so, for example, a transaction thi A, B, C, D, G, H, and K. Now, you have one item set tha, C, D, F. So, you will have to check whether C, D, F appears in this transaction. It is a subset. If it is a subset, it will increase the counter. Otherwise, it will not be. So, you have to check transaction you have to check the count. Bhi aapne Apne counters ko increment bhi karna. So it's not an easy task. So it's a tedious task. Okay. Multiple scans is time consuming. It's complex. It's uh, It takes a lot of time. Okay. But of course, we have reduced the number of scans in the in the from the worst case. Worst case, of course, you have to you would have to do up to M scans, M or M plus one scans. M kya hai? The maximum number of items in your dictionary or vocabulary. Okay. All right. So there are some techniques that you can employ to kind of uh, make your a priori algorithm more efficient. So let's uh, discuss maybe one of them now. I think we are also running out of time. We have a quiz today. Mm -hmm. So let's say okay, uh, maybe I think I'll we start that next time, which we'll discuss later. Okay.
लेट मी डिस्कस समथिंग एल्स बिकॉज वो चीज फिर लंबी हो जाएगी ओके सो वी हैव नाउ फाउंड ऑल द फ्रीक्वेंट आइटम सेट्स इन अ ट्रांजैक्शनल डेटाबेस सो दिस इज वन पीस ऑफ नॉलेज रिमेंबर वी आर डूइंग डेटा माइनिंग एंड डेटा माइनिंग गोल इज जनरेशन जनरेशन ऑफ नॉलेज एंड नॉलेज दैट इज पोटेंशियली एक्शनेबल actually you can get another piece of knowledge from frequent item sets and those are called rules or associations theek hai so for example let's say you have found that a b c is frequent what which what which essentially means that support of a b c is greater than min so ठीक है ना सो दिस इज ऑफ कोर्स ए पीस ऑफ नॉलेज यूजफुल इंफॉर्मेशन दैट यू आर डिजायरिंग एंड यू हैव ऑप्टेन्ड इट बट फ्रॉम दिस पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन यू कैन गेट और यू कैन पोटेंशियली डिराइव एडिशनल यूजफुल पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन सो यू कैन जनरेट रूल्स सो फ्रॉम दिस यू कैन जनरेट रूल्स लाइक वन आइटम ए बी सी सो दैट्स वन रूल यू कैन से बी A C that's another rule. You can say C. Uh, A B that's the third rule, right? We have one item on the left and two items on the right. You can have other combinations as well. So A B C, ठीक है? A C uh, B and then B C and A. ठीक है? तो ये आपके रूल्स जनरेट हो गए हैं ऑफ कोर्स द टोटल नंबर ऑफ रूल्स वुड बी टू रेस्ट टू पावर ऑफ थ्री इन दिस केस दे थ्री आइटम पावर सेट एक्चुअली बनते हैं बिकॉज सारे आप कॉम्बिनेशन देख रहे हैं वो कॉम्बिनेशन लेफ्ट पे रखें राइट पे रेस्ट है ऑफ कोर्स नल वाला नहीं हम काउंट करेंगे तो दैट्स वाई टू रेस्ट टू पावर ऑफ थ्री माइनस वन नल का तो रूल नहीं बनता सो वी हैव दीज मैनी रूल्स सो फ्रॉम वन सिंपल आइटम सेट विद थ्री आइटम्स यू हैव जनरेटेड सिक्स रूल्स ए बी यहाँ के सिक्स हैं ए बी ए बी सी सेवन कोई नीचे से नहीं कर दिया एट पार्ट ऑफ थ्री एट होता ना हम्म या आ ओके नल के दोनों साइड्स होंगे ना एक लेफ्ट साइड पे भी होगा राइट पे भी होगा ठीक है तो ए बी सी सेवन आपने कोई क्वेश्चन पूछना है सो नाउ अब सारे रूल्स इंटरेस्टिंग जरूरी नहीं होंगे सो वी एक्चुअली डिफाइन अनदर मेजर विच वी कॉल दिस विच वी कॉल द कॉन्फिडेंस ऑफ ए रूल सो ए गिवन बी सी सो इसका जो कॉन्फिडेंस है सो सपोर्ट इज ए मेजर सो कॉन्फिडेंस इज अनदर मेजर ऑफ दिस रूल इज बेसिकली द सपोर्ट ऑफ द होल आइटम सेट ए बी सी डिवाइडेड बाय द सपोर्ट ऑफ द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड विच इन दिस केस इज ए इफ दिस सपोर्ट इज ग्रेटर देन सम मिनिमम कॉन्फिडेंस देन दिस रूल इज स्ट्रॉन्ग strong so we have used two keywords to define our interesting pieces of knowledge the one keyword was frequent which we use for item sets and the other keyword is strong which we use for rules so these are interesting knowledges that we would like to extract from our transactional databases from this analysis rules come from frequent item sets that have uh, strong rules come from frequent item sets that have confidence greater than minimum confidence theek hai so i think i will pause here are there any questions uh theek hai so if there are no questions you can start the quiz kisi ka question hai sare quiz ki taiyari ke baithe hain 